Hello friends and welcome to Escaping the Mouse with your host, me, Breck Roll. All right, I'm going to do another episode of Bites and Nibbles with Breck today. And what I'm going to start doing, we're kind of getting close to Christmas now. So I'm going to do a few kind of Christmas themed uh, recipes. Uh, this time today we're going to make some Christmas cookies. Uh, what I'm trying to do is share some of the recipes that I've enjoyed as a, as a kid uh, with you so that you can kind of enjoy them too. And these are going to be just real simple Christmas cookies. Um, I went out and bought some cookie cutters with some kind of fun Christmas shapes and they're just going to be simple white shortbread cookies uh, with frosting and sprinkles and all that fun stuff. And I think it'll be a, kind of an interesting experience. This is going to be the first time me doing this in a long time. So I'm going to be kind of figuring it out as I go along too. So let's get going. So there's two different parts to the cookies we're going to make. There's the cookies themselves and the frosting. So I have different ingredients for, for each. The cookies themselves are fairly simple. It's granulated sugar, flour, and uh, some softened butter. Uh, for the frosting, it's going to be powdered sugar, a bunch of different color types of sprinkles, some food coloring because we're going to change the color of the frosting because it's not going to be white frosting, it's going to be green frosting, it's going to be red frosting, it's going to be yellow frosting. And uh, the recipe I have actually calls for vanilla extra extract, but I'm actually going to use a little mint extract in its place. It'll give the, the frosting kind of a minty flavor. Like I said, I went out and found some kind of fun uh, cookie cutters here. Uh, these were all at Target. They were like a buck a piece. So I just got every one that looked like it could be a Christmas one. So we got, got the angel over here and a six pointed star and a Christmas tree and a Christmas stocking and a candy cane and a snowman and a gingerbread man and a five pointed star. So. You know, we're going to make just a variety of different things and we're going to frost them with different colors and it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm trying to pull some of these uh, recipes of things that I enjoyed as a kid. And this is something that my mom used to make when we were kids. And uh, she had an old uh, Betty Crocker cookbook that she still has. And I hope to get it at some point uh, that it'll be mine. But a few years ago, she got me an updated Betty Crocker cookbook. And this is the recipe we're going to be following here. Now the truth is this recipe is relatively simple and could be prepared with, a, with just a, a mixing bowl and a, a wooden spoon. But since I got this nice mixer here, I'm going to use it. Hey, sue me. Now the recipe actually suggests that right at the beginning you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. I'm not actually going to do that right now because it takes a little bit longer to prepare one of these uh, when you're shooting a vlog at the same time. But if you're doing this for real and not shooting a vlog, you'll preheat your oven to 350. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my butter and it's really, it's really, really crucially important that it be softened butter. You don't want to have your butter be firm because it'll never mix in well. So this has been sitting out for a couple hours and this is three quarters of a cup of butter and one quarter cup of sugar. And so I'm just going to pour those into the mixing bowl and uh, mix that all together, get it all stirred in. And then we're going to add about two cups of flour. So now that we have the butter and the sugar nice and mixed in, I've got, like I said, two cups of flour. I'm just going to start feeding that in a little bit at a time here. Let it all kind of mix together. Gonna have to get in there every once in a while and uh, get the uh, butter concoction off the scraper in there, but that's, that happens sometimes. But actually, sometimes uh, just adding the flour eventually just kind of breaks it all up. So, and that's actually what happened this time. I didn't actually have to get in there and do anything. So, that's good. That's kind of that's kind of what we want to see happen. It's kind of turned into a nice doughy mixture now. I'm just gonna pour the rest of my flour in there. Now you want to you want to kind of start off feeding it in slowly here until until it actually starts turning into uh, a doughy doughy mixture here. But we're just going to let that stir for a little bit, and uh, we'll come back to that. All right, we're starting to get to the point where this looks like it should. Um, the recipe actually says that if the uh, if after mixing everything together, the dough seems a little crumbly, that you can add a couple of more tablespoons of uh, 
butter into that and I actually ended up doing that and I think this consistency is just about right now so we're gonna take this out we're gonna put it onto a uh, lightly floured uh, cutting board and we're gonna roll it into about a half inch thick strip so I'm just gonna use a rolling pin here and we're gonna roll this into a uh, like I said, about a half inch thick uh, uh, slice of dough. Uh, for those of you who don't use uh, inches, that's about a centimeter. So a centimeter thick, half an inch thick, and then we'll use our cookie cutters and cut out our dough. All right, I think that's starting to get there. Wash your hands off so you don't get flour all over the camera. That generally isn't a good thing. Now this recipe says that you're going to get about two dozen one and a half inch cookies. Well, some of these cookie cutter uh, molds are way larger than that. So we aren't going to get two dozen cookies. Well, we may get six or eight. So I'm actually going to just going to make one with each, uh, each of the co cookie cutter uh, forms here. We're going to put that one there. And that looks like a good place for a... For a snowflake, and let's see, I can put a candy cane here. It's like it's like a jigsaw puzzle at this point. You just need to kind of figure out where everything fits, and try and figure out how to push everything together and get as many cookies in this one little section of dough as you can. Oops, gotta make sure I put it right side up here. Let's see, what do we got here? How about that? We'll put a little snowman right there. How does that? Yeah, that'll work. And a little angel action right here. And let's see, can we get a, get a stocking right there? And I don't know, we'll have to come back. Well, once we get uh, all the pieces uh, that we want, uh, pulled away and put onto the cookie sheet, then we'll be able to we'll roll this up and uh, make some more. So we're gonna start with that. So there's our first shape cookies. Uh, we're gonna take uh, what's left over, roll it together, and we'll make some more. All right, so at the end of the day, we got about 14 cookies out of that. Uh, I'm also gonna end up cooking them a little bit less time because uh, the cookies I always did got uh, were like, I think they were thinner, uh, Dough. And so I thought I ran these a little bit on the thin side. They aren't really half an inch They're probably closer to a quarter of an inch So we're gonna watch the cooking time a little bit cook them a little less. They recommend 20 minutes for a uh, For a half inch thick cookie and since this is less we're gonna probably do it Maybe you know 12 or 15 minutes. We'll kind of we'll kind of watch them as they're cooking and We'll know when they're done. All right, our oven is ready. So let's put them in And of course I have a cookie cutter or a cookie sheet that's too wide for the depth of the oven. So yeah, that's the way that goes. All right, we're going to give those about, uh, we're going to start about 10 minutes until we figure out what's going on. All right, I think that's about right. They went about 15 minutes instead of 20 minutes. And they're just starting to turn, turn nice, a little bit brown on the top. So I'm going to pull it out and we'll do the other batch the same way. Now the recipe recommends taking the cookies off immediately off the tray and putting them onto a wire rack. So I'm going to do that. That'll stop the baking process and help them start cooling down really quick. I've allowed these things to cool off now for about an hour and uh, I actually ended up breaking one of the candy canes. Uh, they are a little bit on the delicate side. So I gave it kind of a taste test uh, and the cookie itself is rather bland. So it's definitely going to need the help of some frosting. So let's get going on that. Now while I was in the planning stages of getting the uh, frosting materials, I kind of figured, I kind of knew what the uh, what the recipe was. I knew it was primarily going to be powdered sugar and then something just to liquefy it. And then a little food color and a little flavor. Uh, but I looked it up and actually got the exact uh, amount because you want to make sure you get the right amount with it because if you don't mix it exactly right, it'll be too runny or it'll be too thick. And um, I bought a little packet of multicolored... Uh, food coloring that I'm going to add into it where I think we're actually going to make like four different colors frosting. So what I'll do is I'll mix up one batch of the frosting and then we'll separate that into little parts and we'll add color to it. Now as I mentioned earlier, the recipe actually suggests that you add uh, vanilla extract. But I decided I'm going to separate uh, 
I'm gonna sub, uh, substitute some mint extract. I think that'll uh, have a real nice flavor to it. And it's really simple to do. And so we'll get going on that right now. Now the ingredients for the frosting are actually pretty simple. It's uh, one and a quarter cups of powdered sugar or confectioner's sugar, uh, three tablespoons of milk, and one teaspoon of the, in this case, mint extract. And I'm just gonna throw that in here and we're gonna just kind of mix it up with a fork. You almost wonder how uh, how that little amount of liquid is gonna is gonna actually do that much for the sugar, but it does. Yeah, that's starting to look about right. I think that's good to go here. Now, like I said, I'm gonna mix this into three different sections. I've had actually done a little taste test. It tastes good. The consistency is nice. It's just about right. You want it to be a little bit on the thick side, and then it will solidify uh, after you put it on the cookie. Now, like I said, I'm gonna break this up into, I think about four different sections uh, because I'm gonna make a little bit of uh, red, a little bit of green, a little bit of yellow, and I'm gonna leave some of it white. So I'm gonna do that. We're gonna do them one at a time and we'll like, uh, I think I'll do the green first because then we'll do like the Christmas, uh, the Christmas trees and, uh, and I don't know what else we got here, but we'll figure that out and we'll kind of do each thing its own color. So what I've done is I've mixed a little bit of the frosting into this little glass here. I put just literally one drop of green food coloring in it and uh, I think that's about right. Now I've decided what I'm gonna do is these are the three cookies and I'm gonna do green. So uh, I just put them back in the in the cookie tray and we're gonna just gonna put the, put the frosting on here. And uh, I think normally you might like use a spoon or something like, or a uh, knife or something, but I think what I'm gonna do since the frosting is a little bit kind of pourable, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour the frosting onto the cookies and then spread it around that way. I think that'll be the easiest way to do it. But if you got your own way of doing it, then uh, go for that. Now it's probably not the neatest way in the world to do it. What I ended up doing is just taking little spoonfuls of the frosting and just kind of uh, dripping it onto the uh, cookie. And like I said, it was a little sloppy on the side, but what we'll do is our, uh, we're just gonna kind of do all our work and do all our messy work in the cookie tray here. But what I have now is different kind of varieties of sprinkles and stuff like that. Kind of these multicolor things that are kind of fun. Uh, some red and green, uh, basically sugar. And then my mom always used to put these uh, cinnamon things for like eyes on gingerbread men. And they were always really good, so I got some of those. So. I think just for fun, we'll do the the color sprinkles on the uh, on the uh, candy cane, and we'll do some like red sprinkles on this. Not too much. Might have overdone that a little bit. And then maybe I think we'll throw in a few of the uh, of the. Uh, little cinnamon pieces and we'll just turn those into like Christmas tree ornaments, right? Hey, why not, right? There's no wrong way of doing this, it's just whatever works, so just making it up as I go along here. Oops, that one does not want to go on there. There we go. And this kind of helps uh, the, the, the sugar, the granulated sugar, the sprinkles, all that, that kind of helps kind of hold the uh, the frosting in place a little bit more too so that's also kind of sort of what you want there we go all right like i said it's not very pretty but uh what we'll do is we'll pick it up and we'll move it somewhere else and and then it'll uh then it'll look fine right it's not going to affect its ability to be edible right all right, so I've made up the rest of my frosting. I made up some uh, some red, I left some of it white, and I made some yellow frosting. And now I'm just gonna kind of do my thing here. What I've actually done is I've taken the three cookies I've prepared already and moved them to the other cookie tray, and they're just gonna sit there now until we're ready for them. All right, so there's the final product. Now, I'm gonna admit I never claimed to be an artist, so, you know, whatever. They, they probably, they don't look that good. I'm not much of an artist, but you know what, they're going to be tasty, and I don't know, I think the, the angels now look like ghosts, but whatever. You know, it'll be that kind of a, it'll be that kind of a Christmas, you know. So what I'm going to do now is, like I said, I've transferred these onto the other cookie sheet. I'm going to throw these in the refrigerator a little while and let the frosting kind of set up, and then we'll be good to go. 
All right, these have been in the refrigerator for a little while. The frosting's kind of set up a little bit. Uh, yeah, it's kind of how it should be now. You gotta be able to touch it and it isn't sticky anymore. And also everything should basically stick to it. Losing a little of the, uh, the uh, sprinkles, but that's okay. So it's time to do the all important taste test. Like I said, the cookies themselves were a little bland, but the frosting and the sprinkles should add to it. So let's see how they turned out. Oh yeah, really good. So I really like the fact that I substituted the uh, the mint for the vanilla. Um, the vanilla would probably be good too, but the mint kind of makes it taste a little bit like a candy cane. And uh, what, what goes better with Christmas than candy cane? So I think that's all that I have for today. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time on Escaping the Mouse. Good night.